Hello there and welcome to this episode of the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. I'm Alan Waddell and joined as always by the Athletic Director here at Southeastern Louisiana University, Jay Ortiz. And Jay, thanks for stopping by and spending some time with us. Uh, we're at the University Center this week because uh, men's basketball and women's basketball, they're underway. So the Jay Ladner and Yolanda Moores are, are kicked off here at Southeastern. Yeah, it's an exciting time, no question about it. You know, the girls play in the Southern at home and boys going on the road, some tough competition. It's a, it's a lot of fun this time of year, no question about it. I know both programs are very excited uh, with the new leadership. I know some of the players that have been here uh, under the previous staffs that have been here at Southeast, and they're just they're re-energized. And it's, you can you can tell that by looking at their faces. Yeah, Coach Ladner has done a great job putting the staff together and getting everybody energized. One thing he's done a super job of getting out of community, getting his kids in community, and that's made a big difference. Yolanda's done the same thing. They've been very very active around campus, and that makes a big difference. But I tell you, the product they're gonna put on the floor is gonna be something exciting to watch as well. Jay, I also want to talk to you about the other program that shares this facility is our volleyball program probably the most uh, improved program on campus because Jim Smooth's done a tremendous job and they have qualified for the Southland Conference Tournament that's a huge step in the right direction. Jim Smoot does such a great job I'll tell you what one of the best coaches on the court you're going to find anywhere in the country he's got a lot of experience he was a head coach at Ohio State and he's transferred that over to our program and the girls are really starting to buy in now they're playing for a championship this week. All right, Jay, let's talk about football. You know, a lot of people want to know about the football team, and uh, it seems like since Coach Roberts has been here uh, that they play their best when their best is needed. They came out and had a dominating performance 28-9 to over McNeese State. Uh, a great chance to wrap up the Southland Conference Championship and get another playoff bid here in 2014, and that's what everybody expected going into the year, and this team has filled up to their expectations. Yeah, you know, play, chance to play for back-to-back -back Southland Championships never been done here at Southeastern history. Coach Roberts does such a great job getting them ready to play week in, week out, playing at Nichols this week for that conference championship. We win that game, another Southland Conference title. And, Jay, i got to ask you because I know I'm sure a lot of our fans are wondering if we knock off Nichols Day, if the Lions take care of business, oh, they, they want to know what's going on with the playoffs. What are the playoff scenarios? I know that there's still an opportunity to maybe be a national seed, a top eight seed, and also that uh, the athletic department at the university has put in another strong bid for a home playoff opportunity. Yeah, we have. We put in another great bid, very, very aggressive bid to say the least. But we take care of business at Nichols. That everything takes care of itself. We south the conference champions again. Pretty much guaranteed a playoff spot. But like you said, we want to get in that top eight national seed so we get a bye first round. We'll know Sunday at 10 o'clock on ESPNU that it's, it's announced. So we'll know then. So obviously there's a ton going on here. Teams competing for championships. That's what uh, it, it, it's all about here at Southeastern Athletics and also two programs, women's basketball and men's basketball, getting their season underway. So a lot to look forward to. And you can check all these schedules at lionsports.net. Come out and watch your Lions and Lady Lions. So let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll get to all the highlights right here on the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. <gasps> Hello, beautiful. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, Anthony. How much does my discount double check save me? About 150. Done. I don't have State Farm, but insurance, find me money. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you with unexpected savings. That's getting to a better state. This is Sean. We saw him holding a Bud Light, which means he's up for whatever happens. In this case, Jimmy Johnson. I, Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> challenge you to a little football game. Don't get nervous. Are we ready? I'm ready. Jimmy Johnson has dominated the electric football circuit. Yeah, look at the little Jimmy run. He's hurt. He's pushing through. He's pushing through. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's a win. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. Our Lions just had a big victory over McNeese State 28-9. Let's go out to Strawberry Stadium where I had a chance to sit down with Coach Roberts and check out these second half highlights where the Lions controlled the game. Coach, they had a lot of momentum at this point. They felt like they were in the game. They're playing well. It's a one possession game. Uh, they come out try to get the running game going, but it just seemed like all night your defense would, would answer the bell. 
Again, they're trying to get the run game going there, and they got 34, and yeah, he's getting some real hard-earned yards for them. They get some first downs. They're moving the sticks, but again, our defense making them earn everything. I think you do that, usually you're going to be in great shape. They're not getting the big play. Here it comes. We'll come through and get the sack. Coach, it seems at that point we hadn't been able to get a lot of pressure on him, and, and but in the second half was able to get to him a lot and make some big plays. And that was Aaron Price with that. Great call again on the stunt. By, uh, Coach Here's Scott. the play of the game probably. Uh, Dylan Bozier has a big catch. Uh, it looks like he fumbles the football and they run it back inside the five yard line. So here we go. It looks like it's 14 to nine. They're going to have the ball uh, first and goal. Uh, this is what replay is for. They go to the replay booth. Replay gets it right. Dylan was down on the field and that's a huge play in the ball game. Your offense would keep the football. No, it was, definitely was a huge play. Uh, I think you know, we want to give hats off to the, the commissioner of conference, the presidents, for uh, making that commitment to go to the replay so they can get it right. And here we go. This is our second uh, wedding proposal, a marriage proposal uh, at Strawberry Stadium this year, and she would say yes. So uh, another uh, fan gets a couple of fans get engaged right there at Strawberry Stadium. It's the second time this year, but. Uh, Coach, 14-9 at this point, as you, you head into the fourth quarter, it's a really tight ball game. We thought it would be, and your defense, like we've seen them do so many times, and your team really just take over the fourth quarter. Well, again, I think uh, defense is now getting pressure on the quarterback or, or making force and throws a little early. Uh, he's having to do it with people all around his face and you know, get the ball back to their offense. And... Here's a third and short, kind of a power formation. You bring in Jacob Newman and Drew Mesita and Eugene Bethea. And, uh, Here's a little breathing room as uh, Brian hits Jeff Smiley, beats man coverage, and takes to the house. Yeah, nice throw by Brian. Great job by Jeff. Just out running the defender, and getting the ball in the end zone. He said Jeff had a big night with two touchdowns. Uh, probably two huge opportunity times to come up with them. So Lions go up 21 9. That was a big extra point because that made it a 12 point game. Put the Lions up by, they had to score two touchdowns to try to beat Southeastern. Couldn't just uh, get a touchdown on the field. Uh, this is a big sack. Uh, their quarterback would be injured on the play, uh, but your defense just swarmed them under as they had to make a, a change at quarterback. And again, just putting pressure. They try to go deep, and another great interception by Holland Miller. Yeah, that was that was Aaron Price actually with his second sack on the night. Had a huge night defensively, and Harlan with great ball skills goes up on the deep ball and, and gets the interception. Hey, that was very uh, reminiscent of the interception he had against McNeese a year ago, where he kind of undercuts the route with the ball in the air, and uh, and then you, you get the ball out from your own goal line. And, you try to throw the ball deep to Chris Malathe with pass interference to give you a little breathing room, as then they would have an unsportsmanlike penalty as well. So you get 30 yards worth of penalties on one play. Yeah, it kind of really kind of helped us out there get out of the uh, out of backed up territory, and then Brian throws a strike to Devontae Scott. He just outruns two defenders, splits and makes a great catch and a touchdown. That was a third and long as well. So a great uh, pass and a great catch by Devontae, and that kind of sealed it, Coach. As you go up 28 to nine at this point. Uh, as they only had put up nine points in the game. They, it, it felt pretty good that you could protect this lead with only four minutes to go in the ball game. Yeah, defense played an outstanding ball game all night long, and, and they're going to continue in those last four minutes of this ball game to keep them out of the end zone and play really well. Get some pressure on the quarterback and just did a great job in the secondary on the, the receivers. She called Carl Scott right there t telling his defense to finish, and they would as they had the ball, got it inside your territory, just put some points on the board, and they couldn't do it as uh, defense just continued to harass their quarterback. Uh, they have to throw this ball away uh, as Cody Goggler on the on the interception there on the, on the sideline makes the catch. <laughs> Showing off his skills, so he still has some. And that would do it, Coach. Uh, you, you'd uh, end up winning this football game 28-9. to nine. You rushed for 131 yards, passed for 193. You moved to 8-3 on the year, Coach, and 7-1 and in South and Conference play. Congratulations to Coach Roberts and his football team as they knock off McNeese State and stay in the top 10 in FCS football. Let's go back out to Strawberry Stadium and hear from some excited players after the big win. You go back watching them on film, you could see, you know, all year they've been playing hard. And, um, you know, they came out and played hard again. And, you know, it's one of those games that, you know, a rivalry game in state, um, you know, and uh, to come out on top and uh, for it to be, you know, senior night, uh, last regular season home game, um, you know, it's definitely a good feeling. So, you know, I'm just happy that, that uh, we were able to come out and get a, a great team win. It's always next drive. That's what we tell ourselves. It's, it's next play, next drive. So, you know, it was our, we, we had nine points. Half. We said we want to leave this game at nine, and that, that's what we ended up doing. So I think we're happy about that. 
Congratulations once again to those players as they celebrated a senior night and got a big victory against McNeese State. We're now going to turn our attention to volleyball as they were in action against Nickel State. Here's the highlights. Hartley. Number six, middle blocker Rachel Bunn. Number 10, outside hitter Tiffany Thomas. Number 13, middle blocker Landry Bullock. And number 17, outside hitter Elizabeth Ramey. Congratulations to the volleyball team after their performance against Nichols State as uh, Coach Jim Smoot will join us later on our program as we'll talk about the Lions as they have advanced to the Southland Conference Tournament. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have more right here on the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. Mr. Goldman loved his family a lot, didn't he, Dad? He sure did. That's why he had State Farm Life Insurance, like you. So his family never has to worry, right? Mr. Goldman didn't have life insurance. Why not? Well, he's just a goldfish. Ignore him. You've got questions. Your State Farm agent has answers. Backed by the life insurance company millions of moms and dads already trust, we put the life back in life insurance. Let's hear it for Bud Light, the perfect beer for when you take over a town, make me the mayor, call it whatever USA. Then pack it to the brim with so much spontaneous, never thought I'd be doing this awesomeness that it's hard to believe we actually pulled it off, right? Body bowling, roller disco, Bud Light, tiny cars, tiny horses, big celebrities, Bud Light, dancing, karaoke, Bud Light, whatever that is. This guy, this girl, oh my, wow, look at that. Bud Light and Bud Light, then put it on the internet for everyone to see. And whatever else happens. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Find out more at upforwhatever.com. Hey Lion fans, I'm Southeastern head basketball coach Jay Ladd. Join us as we usher in a new era of Lion basketball. For more information on season tickets, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LINE. Always remember, line up. 
Welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. Our men's basketball team got the Jay Ladner era underway at home against Loyola. Here's the highlights. All right, Coach, well, uh, first game of your career here at Southeastern. You have Loyola in town uh, for an exhibition game at the University Center. I know your team was very excited to hit the floor for the first time. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. We've been beating, on a, beating up on each other since school started, and it was time to play somebody else for a change. And I, I know our players were excited about it. Uh, they, they've worked really hard there. I know that's coach speak, but they, they really have, and they've been very open to change. Obviously, uh, they're getting to learn the coaching staff. We're just getting to learn our players and each other. There's so many new faces. So I, I really want to compliment their attitude and openness, willingness to, to change to a new system of play. And you talk about your system. You know, we can see in the highlights here against Loyola, your, your team really came out and started fast. Uh, playing up-tempo defense and, and really uh, being aggressive towards the basket. Well, that's what that's the way we want to play, and and, and certainly uh, the job of a head coach is to put his team uh, into the best style of play, best system of play that gives them the best opportunity to win. And and sometimes that you have to vary that. Uh, our with the the way that we want to play, the way that we will eventually play here will certainly be a 94-foot game, very fast-paced, uh, offensively and defensively, and be a really exciting way to play. And a lot of players we found. They, that we're recruiting want to play in those type of systems. There's more touches for everyone, uh, more shots, and, and it's, just a, it's, it's just a great way to play basketball, we think. And, and you told me, uh, you know, when, we, when you got the job here, you said, hey, we're going to shoot a lot of three-point baskets. We saw you shoot a lot of threes to start out this game against Loyola. No, no question. Uh, we, we got off to a great start. Uh, as De Devontae ups, and that was a ESPN top ten highlight, you know, or, or should have been anyway, whether it made it on there or not, the big-time shot. And you see Josh Fillmore there making a three. We, we really employ the three. We've got some guys that are good shooters that can shoot the three-point basket, and we like to take advantage of it. Coach, I thought this was a, a great matchup, especially uh, against Loyola, because they made it tight at one point, so your team had to respond and, and were able to stretch it back out there in the second half, but uh, really a great – it gave you a lot of different scenarios in this opening. No question. Uh, Loyola, one, we, we have a little different philosophy probably than some on our uh, exhibition games. We want to try to play some of our local uh, NAIA Division II schools uh, to give them an opportunity. It gives them a chance to make some money for their programs. But there's a little more interest in that. There's a little more interest, I think, in, in us playing Loyola than maybe playing uh, uh, maybe more of a, a lesser known uh, Division II or Division uh, or NAIA school. So Loyola being right down the road, uh, there was a lot of interest in that. Some of our players knew the players on their team and vice versa. And, and they're well coached. They've got a good team. In fact, at times, they their size, they look like the Division one team, uh, we look like a, a, a smaller division team out there. They Nice size and the great thing about Loyola, they did so many things offensively, it forced us to prepare for different a different style of play and a lot of different offensive actions. Coach, we've seen a lot of the highlights. Uh, number 10 there is A. Jackson, uh, a local product from St. Thomas Aquinas, um, went off, transferred back to the Southeastern, had a big game in the open. Zay Jackson, uh, we feel like, has got an opportunity. He, you know, he hasn't played basketball in two years, uh, one due to a knee injury, and then he was out one year. Um, he, he's got a chance to be an all-league player before he over, if it's not this year, certainly before he graduates here. And, and, and right now, he's a player that we're pinning our hopes on. Congratulations to Coach Jay Ladner as he gets the, his first win here at Southeastern against Loyola at home in front of the University Center crowd. We're now going to turn our attention to the women's basketball team as they had their home opener against Southern. Here's the highlights. <laughs> Seven drives right, gets it up and in. Simone Miller with her first field goal, and it is six to nothing. Southern in a very tough man-to-man -to -man defense. They get it to pull at the elbow. She kicks it out. Miller wants a three. She's got it. The first long-distance call of the home season goes to Simone Miller, and it's an 11-1 Southeastern lead. Back to Miller. Shot clock is at 7. Styles drives left, goes in, off the glass, lays it in. Elizabeth Styles with her first field goal, 13-1. A 13-9 Southeastern lead down low to pull. She lays it high off the glass. Nice job by Styles feeding the post that time for her first assist of the ball game. Southeastern, Dela Cruz 
swings it over to Anderson, down low to pull. They're going to Nana, and she responds back-to-back -back field goal for Nana Poole, who has six. Jefferson Hoskins down with the rebound. And Styles gets it ahead now to Fielder. Nice catch and shoot as Danny Fielder had posted up, had to turn around and lays it in off the glass. It as now Hernandez wide open. She hits the long distance call. Erica Hernandez back up to an eight point lead. Here's Styles racking up the rebounds in this first half. Here's Miller, she hits a long distance call, Simone Miller. It's back up to a nine point Southeastern lead. And Southeastern can play for the final shot, but Styles hits a long distance call of her own. And it is up to a 12 point Southeastern lead. The Alonda Moore era is underway here at Southeastern and we're expecting a lot of great things out of the women's basketball program under her leadership. Let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the recent Hall of Fame inductees, and then we will also be joined on set by Coach Jim Smoot, right here on the Southeastern Sports Report, presented by State Farm. <gasps> Hello, beautiful. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, Anthony. How much did my discount double check save me? About 150 Done. I don't have State Farm, but insurance, find me money. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you with unexpected savings. That's getting to a better state. I'm Yolanda Moore, head women's basketball coach here at Southeastern Louisiana University, and I want you to join us as we usher in a new era of Lady Lion basketball. For more information on season tickets, log on to www.lionsports.net, or you can call 549-LION. Lion up. This is Sean. We saw him holding a Bud Light, which means he's up for whatever happens. In this case, Jimmy Johnson. I, Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> challenge you to a little football game. Don't get nervous. Are we ready? I'm ready. Jimmy Johnson has dominated the electric football circuit. Yeah, look at the little Jimmy run. He's hurt. He's pushing through. He's pushing through. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, it's a but like the perfect beer for whatever happens. Welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. It's now time to take a look at our two recent inductees into the Southeastern Athletic Hall of Fame, Wade Miley and Amelia Arnadowska. Wade Miley and Amelia Arnadowska were inducted into the Southeastern Hall of Fame this past Saturday in a ceremony held in the Hall of Champions inside the University Center. Both athletes said being back on campus and going into the Hall of Fame was a special day for them. Um, it's, just, it's just a great honor to... Uh to be a part of some of the names that are, that are already there, and uh, it's just it's a special honor. Well, it's such an honor to be here. It was perfect four years being here, playing for the school, and to get something like this, it's, it's amazing. Miley pitched for the Lion baseball team from 2006 to 2008, accumulating many honors during his time. The LaRanger native was part of the all-conference team and was named the Southeastern Male Athlete of the Year in 2008. Miley was not a midweek starter, but he was in the ballpark the night the 2008 team went to Alex Box Stadium and beat LSU. He remembers it like it was yesterday. I remember Rene LeBlanc, uh, his senior year, and I can remember, I mean, he threw a gem for us. And uh, he kind of, Rene set the tone early in that game. I don't think he gave up a hit for the first four or five innings. And I was special to watch what he did that game and kind of and kind of, kind of set our mark, like you said, against a, a, a powerhouse team who, if you put Southeastern in LSU 10 years ago, everybody thinks LSU, but now it's not so much, you know? So it's, uh, it's awesome. Arnadovska, a Macedonian native, played at Southeastern from 2005 to 2008 and was named the Southeastern Female Athlete of the Year both in 2007 and 2008, one of only two athletes to have ever won the award in consecutive years. Arnadovska also holds the school record for career wins, amassing an 83-11 and 11 record. She was an All-Southland and All-Louisiana selection all four years and won league titles in 2005, 2006, and 2007. 
It was a great team that we had for four years. It was like a great fit, all of us. Um, we tried our best and I think the results came out perfectly. So yeah, we had to get the fourth one, but it slipped from our hands the last year, but it was perfect. Like we, Jason helped us a lot. We as a team helped each other. So it was a great force. Miley and Second Arnadovska are the 131st and 132nd and athletes Miley to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. For more yeah, yeah, information on the Southeastern Hall of Fame, you can visit lionsports.net and click on Hall of Fame under SLU Athletics. And now joined by volleyball coach, Coach Smoot. Thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, we, we've been bragging on your program the last few weeks as uh, no doubt the most improved program on campus. As uh, It's been a good year and you just qualified for the Southland Conference Tournament. I know you got to be excited about that. We're very excited about it. That was our goal at the first of the year. Um, with that in mind, I scheduled a really tough preseason and you know, we played Michigan State we played some very very strong teams and we didn't have as much success as we did preseason last year but I think it prepared us for the conference and like I said our goal is to make the conference tournament so accomplishing that is a, is a really great thing for this team. Well the thing about it is at this level uh, at the Division One level, it's all about getting in the tournament because anything can happen. You get hot for a few days, you can be conference champions. Uh, it's going to start this Friday as you're going to take on Central Arkansas. You're the seven seed, they're the two seed. Uh, and right now, your team has to play the best that they've played all year for a chance to win the Southland Conference title. Yeah, we're hoping that the old saying, it's hard to beat a team three times in a season, holds true because we've lost to Central Arkansas the past two matches. But we're playing really well, even though we've uh, had some girls out with injuries. Uh, past few matches we've played without three of our starters. Uh, we're hoping to get Veronica Turk back for this match, which will help us. Um, so, you know, anything can happen, like you said. We're just hoping we go out there and play our best and have a good result. Coach, i got to ask you this as well. This is a, a very a good job you've done this year, and your team has done a very young team this year, and have really gained experience and have got better. Have you seen development and growth as the year goes on? Yeah, I think it started last spring. We really saw a lot of improvement individual skill-wise, which was our emphasis during the spring. And I think that has uh, translated over to the season. The girls are getting better all the time. Well, the game will be on, or the match will be on Friday uh, at Northwestern State. What, what time is uh, it? 11. 11 o'clock in the morning. So you can follow your Lions right there, your Lady Lions, as the volleyball team is in the Southland Conference Tournament as uh, Coach Smoot and his team have a quest for the Southland Conference Championship. So, Coach, congratulations on making it in on a great year, and good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, well, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Southeastern Sports Report, presented by State Farm. Mm -hmm.